Welcome to uh, the 2014 first edition of The Road 2. This is our 16th year. We're very excited to be back with some of our usual crew. And um, I'm your host, Patty Morsey. We're going to start off with introductions with one of our oldest old timers. Wow. <laughs> okay. Jim Parmley. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Jim Parmley. Uh, I run the Northern Virginia Republican Pack and Republicans United for Tax Relief, and I am a, uh, outnumbered, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and John Flannery on the uh, other side of the political yeah, so spectrum. I, I'm, I'm a veteran as long as Jim, I think. We've, both been, we've been thinking of doing a David Letterman and just walking off the set, but we, we're not ready to do that. I'm a recovering federal prosecutor. You never get over having that power as a young man, a hill rat. I write a lot of columns and so forth, and I spend most of my time in our firm, Campbell Flannery, representing the abused and misunderstood. And it's good to see everybody for our 16th season. Yeah. Thanks, John. Um, we also have Dave Butler, who is uh, from Vice Mayor of the Leesburg, um, of Leesburg on the town council. Dave, do you want to give yourself a little background here? Yeah, thank you, Patty. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, uh, the Vice Mayor of, of Leesburg, as Patty said. I've been on the town council there for um, uh, coming on six years now. And uh, so I've really been involved in a lot of um, you know local issues and how local government works, but I'm happy to opine on almost anything. Great, thanks for coming. Um, and our last but not least panelist, Liz Miller. I actually am the least because I'm the shortest. Okay, that's just one way of being the least. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Liz Miller. I uh, am on the board of NARAL Pro Choice Virginia Foundation. Um, and uh, I uh, ran against Tag Greeson, who's been in the news a lot lately, uh, last November, and I had a terrific time. Uh, it was the best time of my life. That yeah, was a good race, it, close race. It was a very close race, and um, I, I just had a blast. Enjoyed Wouldn't have missed the, it for the world. Yes. Well, good. Well, you have a good perspective to bring. Um, so we're going to start off with uh, something obviously in the news all the time, the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. And I'll just start with Jim and get your thoughts on after the deadline, you know, the, the supporters say they greatly surpassed the, um, the projected or the targeted amount. What's your take on how that played out? Well, I mean, if you set your own goals, they had a higher goal for it than they, as they realized they weren't going to make that goal, they started lowering the goal. Uh, and so, yes, they may, they potentially may have met their lowered goal, but the problem, one of many problems is um, they're counting everybody, evidently, who went on the website for almost any reason. Uh, we don't know how many people actually paid uh, for the health insurance. So until we know those numbers, you can't really score it. Okay, uh, in as terms far as of the premium from, yeah, payments I mean, haven't started yet, people have signed up. Well, yeah, I mean, technically they were supposed to have started, but the Obama administration kept extending the deadline further and further and further and further. And I guess my, one of my questions is if somebody gets sick but they haven't paid the, um, the premium, how far back retroactively do you now go? Um, if they keep putting off the deadline month after month. So until, I until the we get real always numbers. was yeah. March 31st. It, it was. It's, it was. Not, it's not March 31st now. It's uh, not March 31st now. They're, they're saying if, oh, you, if you check a box saying that, that you, you tried, okay. uh, and, 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 they, and they've made it clear, we're not going to check. It's an open, it's an open book test. Okay, so you, actually, that even that you wouldn't cheat on. So but, if you've expressed well, interest, you're insurance still Insurance has to start May 1st. If you, yeah, if you vaguely expressed interest in health care <laughs> sometime the, the before the March 31st. Starts, the, the insurance starts May 1st if you sign up anytime during April. Uh, you can get coverage by May 1st. Okay. This is one of these, so let's go to John. Go yeah, I think it's one of these forest and trees point. thing. I mean, uh, isn't the objective to have as many people as possible covered who are not now covered so that they're not going to emergency rooms and they're uh, without preventive care of any sort, burdening us with a cost that we then pay on the backside at the worst possible time for an individual? And we have 7.1 million people who uh, are now in the program. So why do we care? Why, but, 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 I didn't interrupt you. Why, why do we care when <laughs> they sign up? Isn't the point to have as many sign up as possible? And shouldn't we be moving the dates so they can, as opposed to saying, nope, well, we're going to now, in this program to give you health care, set up a wall beyond which you can't get health care. Oh. That's not the objective. Oh, right, the objective should be flexibility to give as many what people I, what I wanted, as possible. What I wanted was single payer. What we of ended course, up with yes. was the Republican idea of everybody has to buy it. 
because that gives money to the insurance companies and that's good for their business and the insurance companies are actually pretty happy about that. What I wanted was single payer, everybody covers everybody and life is good. Um, you end up with uh, uh, fewer unintended pregnancies, you end up actually with uh, more unintended pregnancies coming out to being uh, uh, babies because people aren't uh, afraid to look at uh, medical uh, care for uh, pregnancy, medical care for um, their children as they grow up. They're, they're not afraid to look a, a medical bill in the face, which most people are at the, at the well, moment. See, oh, yeah, my, my, let me, let me say you? one thing about that. I, I think it's a little bit of a digression to go back and say what we could have had. I think it, it would be useful if it, as a nation on any program we did, we could figure out a way to accentuate the positive. You know, at, at what age don't you have a pre-existing well, condition which could have barred insurance? Now it can't. What about families, particularly given the economy, that wanted to be able to cover their children, and now that did, that has been extended? Yeah. Um, in my own personal experience and my anecdotal evidence is people are paying less premiums because of the principles that there are more people in the pool to spread the risk. Now, right. are now there problems? But hold on, that's not, that that's, not, that's, not, that's not necessarily true. There are plenty of people who are paying more than they were before. Well, well again, the, it just makes no sense mathematically. If you spread the number of people in a program, you spread the risk, and you lower the premiums. It's happened in my, in my law firm. We're paying the younger folks aren't signing up. The younger folks who you're counting on are not at the end. Let's go to Dave. I mean, let's go to Dave. We don't have real numbers because we don't know who pays. Hold on, right. guys. That's Not fine. that you have yeah. to tackle this on the Leesburg Town Council, but I'm sure you have a, an opinion on this. Well, and we not only have to count the 7.1 million, but also the 3 million that uh, have signed up for Medicaid that um, had previously uh, not been eligible or hadn't signed up, plus all the ones that have not gone through the website but have signed up for private insurance outside. You don't have to go through the website. How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you give the, the government credit for people who signed up? I'll because, give you an example. Because of the insurance I, covering things like um, uh, pre-existing conditions. They're, they're not allowed to turn you away well, from that. Fact, um, hold, they're not allowed on, to turn you away I from that. Well, hold health. Hold on. I lost my health care insurance in part, well, actually because of Obamacare. My, because my plan evidently wasn't completely compliant, it, they, they didn't outright cancel it. They shut down people signing up for it. So new people couldn't join the risk which pool. Which means that you, but they could, you, new people could not join the risk pool, which means obviously over the last couple of years, the rates skyrocketed because people moved but, out of the program because but, they got older or whatever. ACA, Right. The your companies, I, I don't know if you work for a company, but the company that I worked for would renegotiate their plans every year. So you can't the, renegotiate the, a plan that's but, not so, compliant with the ACA. Well, the that's plan true. that the plan that we had before ACA ever showed up. Um, was redone every year. So some years it would cover something, and some years it wouldn't cover other things. Um, and you wouldn't know until your company uh, said, okay, this is what we're doing this year, and this is what the premiums are going to be. And if you don't like it, you can lump it. Well, let me finish just this want. point, yeah, but though, this goes to because your you're taking what you're saying is because of that, because the risk pool was shrunk by the government, because as the plan went ridiculously high because of Obamacare, I ended up leaving the plan. So, so much for if you like, if you have a health care plan you like, you can keep it. I ended up going and signing up for a separate plan, th just as you said, outside of the outside of the uh, the uh, uh, wait, the government. Wait, 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 outside of the wait, government. No, I, I, I want, went. Can I, I went clarify to something? Are you saying that you left your plan because you decided to leave your plan? Oh, I left my plan because the government wouldn't allow it to continue in the form no, but, but in the form that it had. Right, no, well, no, we're, no, we're, we're kind of getting down. Okay, no, no, but I, I, gotta, I, I still have. I, wait, I still haven't made the point, but, which is uh, I, went, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. I went. I went to my insurance company. Right. I signed up for a new plan uh, because my old plan was no longer available in the same form to me. Are you now saying that no, Obamacare no, takes no, no, credit no. for my private side about, about, no, because no, you all no, took away about my plan? Additional people. <laughs> The fact is, when, when, you, when you add it all up and you take the numbers and none of this four Pinocchio crap, when you look at um, all the rational uh, additions, it's anywhere from 9 to 15 million new people have insurance that didn't have insurance before. I don't think that's accurate. And it's it's, it's it absolutely include, accurate. It includes people who did have insurance No, before. that does yeah. not include those. If you include the people that did have insurance that just switched, okay, now you're up in higher, but that wouldn't make sense to count those. But the, but the, the fact of the matter is, I think that's an outstanding success, considering that there's been about half the country that's been actively 
trying to wreck this program, telling people not to sign up, taking out advertisements, telling people not to sign up. Well, since and the president lied to me and I had to switch to an inferior health care plan, I don't really feel great well, about it. Well, yeah, but let's, but let's go That's back. fine. Let's I don't, go I don't back feel great to, about it. That's my, fine. My you don't. Plan but there's, there's millions, but there's millions and millions and millions and millions of people that think it's great. Hold on, Jim, your point, though, is that your plan didn't meet all the criteria, the basic fundamental criteria that were set out for if you have an insurance plan, it needs to do these five things, right? It, it needs to give you a colonoscopy for free if you're over 50. It needs so, to. Oh, Obamacare pretty so much my, gave my me a colonoscopy. Is, it needs, the larger, it needs let, to give let's you, go back to John. If, if you're a woman, this, it needs to give one. you an ob -GYN Let's go back exam. to John because he said, let's step back and like look at the bigger picture here. Well, There's I mean, a the bigger picture. There's a qualitative issue going on. Well, the on. bigger picture is if you're buying cheap insurance and. Uh, it doesn't actually protect you, and you right. get it because My you're young. My plan covered more things before than it does uh, well, now. I don't, okay. I don't want I, to. I, I, I don't want to do a consultation uh, on your particular well, no, insurance plan. My, my point but is, there are a lot of people who are affected by it, and 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 you guys are sort of glossing over it. It's not just me. It's a lot of people out well, there. Well, I, I don't know what a lot of people health, is. who are paying for health insurance who now have inferior health insurance. I, I don't believe that. I, I, I just well, don't believe it. My, I'll tell you where they have inferior health insurance. I'll tell you where they have inferior health insurance in every state in this union where Republicans said, no way, no Medicaid, we're not going to set up a way for you guys to get it from us, go get it from the feds, go walk. Ideologically refusing to take care of the ill in our country in the yeah. so-called faux well, Christian well, we, party, we do have, the Republicans. We do have Medicaid, that, which we spend oh, come a lot on. of money let's go, on. Let's transition to that issue because that is that has been a very um, uh, contentious issue yeah. in the state legislature over the last few months. Um, whether to expand Medicaid, the, the uh, House of Delegates is saying, you know, we're not going to have a budget that includes expansion of Medicaid. The governor and the <laughs> Democrats are saying it must. So they're kind of at well, loggerheads. And the, and, and the Republicans in the Senate are saying we're good with this, too. No, no, no. We, we, just we a, cov just we a covered few of them. Just a couple of them, the ones who normally right, well, vote with let, Democrats. Let's start with that. We're going to shift over to oh, the, the, state, yeah. the Commonwealth of Virginia perspective on all so, this. So we're uh, the, the Republicans in the House seem to be really happy to be sending our tax money, money that we're already paying, to my sister in Vermont, to my parents in New York, to uh, 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 Governor Brewer in Arizona, um, and not keep it here for us to that, help our economy. Well, and that's Brewer, not accurate because we're paying for the people in Vermont whether we sign up or not. Well, so but, they don't but, they don't but, get extra but, money. Well, we pay, they don't, they don't we, get like but, double the health care. Well, Jim, care. explain though, explain what the but, but we don't we don't is. get their money back. Let, let him have some time. Money goes to the federal treasury. Explaining the position of the uh, most of the Republicans in the in the legislature uh, about. Medicaid expansion. It's well, we here's, don't the wanna, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Medicaid expansion, uh, Republicans in the House would say, uh, is based on a promise. And considering that President Obama's promise was the lie of the year from, uh, was it Paul uh. Factor? It was a, more than a four Pinocchio lie that you could keep your health care if you wanted to. Um, they're saying, oh, don't worry, guys. We're going to pay for this plan in the future. And as we've seen with government programs, they generally, that generally doesn't happen. So, so the Republicans so what you're saying, are like, what? So what you're Social Security, Medicaid. Yeah, that will be right. stuck with the so bill. What, so so we need saying, to be careful. We need to be careful about what, what parts oh, of Obamacare we accept. So the long-term cost. It's, it's a lot of money. We've got to figure out what, how what that would be handled. Can, the Republican pants, excuse me a second. Uh, the Republican wait, whoa, 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 whoa. pants on wait. fire lie is that they care about any ill person in America, period. It's all bottom line. We don't want any employer paying a cent more. We want to be able to brag the people, you people who are healthy and have your program, don't <sighs> worry about us helping anybody else. Mm -hmm. we, we pretend to care about everybody else, but they have an equal opportunity to die, even though they don't uh, have any uh, insurance. Uh, okay, that we're prepared hold on, to hold on. I've just been that, called a heartless blankety blank. No, so no, let no, me no, no. let me explain. I call your party a heartless I'm blankety blank. I'm going to go with the uh, non-friendly And you're, and you're an apologist for a really rotten <laughs> program. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Minute, and that's okay. You can do that. I need to answer his character attack first. I need to take up the for a second because your party says that they are uh, good businessmen, that they're uh, that good business people, that, that they're about making sure that um, uh, business is um, well run and, um, and whatnot in the country, right? I would hope Democrats would feel that way, but well, yes, no, no, we but, generally but, I mean, try this, to feel this, that way. Yeah. This, is, this, is the, 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 this is the land <laughs> the that Democratic you're... Democratic Party? Well, not well, not a is, bit. This I, is, know, okay. this is the, the <laughs> island that you folks have put your flag and said, this is ours, right? 
But One is, it, is it good business <laughs> to say, we're going to make sure that every other competitor of our business, the state business, is getting a subsidy that we're refusing to take, in no matter how long but a subsidy that would be. I'll turn your question around. Should a well-run uh, uh, business, the Virginia government as it were, uh, take on an unfunded mandate and liability that they don't know what's going to happen well, to in a couple of years? Look, the, the, the fact that, of the matter is, they said, I mean, okay. we don't know. For, forget, I mean, take Obamacare or anything else uh, out of the equation. The fact is there's about 400,000 people that are in a hole that uh, can't afford insurance, and aren't eligible for Medicaid. Well, that's not entirely so. Sure. How do we? That's not entirely the point. The, the, how do, I, I understand. Of, plenty of no, folks in that air, No, plenty of folks in that window. We, there, we've done a lot of studies on this. Uh, younger folks aren't going to don't want to buy the insurance. Uh, many of them don't want to buy the insurance in any case, whether they have the money well, or they don't. Out have of the these four hundred thousand, these four hundred thousand people, the vast majority of them are not are not that. So don't try sure, to take the five percent of those I, I, that I, I, are in there. Well, if you can go down to Wise County, go down to Buckhannon County. County and look at those people and say, how do you get health care? Right now, their health care is lousy. The only health care they get, there's two ways that they get health care. One is that um, volunteers go down and they bring health trucks down there and they bring ah. people out of the mountains and they mm -hmm. come and they give them health care. Well, here's the and thing. the other thing is they go to emergency rooms in hospitals that we're all paying for. So how are you going to deal okay. with those 400,000 people? I, 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 and let, we have let, a perfect please, solution that finish, works well. Let me finish this answer before you all jump on me. You're talking about folks who can't get certain things or th that you're unhappy with their health care. My plan, and yes, you're saying that maybe it covers a colonoscopy or whatever. Maybe there are some things that the new plan covers that the other plan didn't. A very, a very upfront thing that my new plan does not cover is my new plan does not have dental care. My old plan had dental care. My new plan does not have dental care. So I have swapped a policy that I liked, that I was promised by the president I could keep. I've ended up swapping because of the requirements mm -hmm. of Obamacare destroy, uh, damaging that plan greatly. I've switched into something that covers so, less. What's so it got to do? No, no, no. So what I'm saying is you're saying the folks in Wise County don't have enough coverage, which is why they have to they send have down trucks. And some of those trucks they send down there are to help them with dental care. Well, you're you're sitting at a table with somebody who has lost their health, lost their dental care in part because can, of Obamacare. What does that have so, to do so with I expanding do, Medicaid? I do care about the people in Wise but County. I, do you all care about all so the panelists which, sitting here? What's your solution? I, I, just, I, just I, priced, I, I just priced all of this stuff out just recently. And to get a plan with dental for grown-ups is not all that much more expensive than to get a plan uh, without dental for grown ups. It, so but why? I, I price it out myself too. And so the problem is, it doesn't cover what my plan covered. And it makes more sense to so take the premiums you would have paid and either put what, it in an HCA. It, what okay. isn't it You're talking covered? about people that have lost their teeth. I mean, I, yeah. they I mean, put a. They yeah. put a uh, they put guys, not, can, can we take this to a larger well, public well, policy well, debate? Well, it completely covers pediatric care and pediatric care. I'm not a Let's get out of the weeds. So you have no solution for the 400,000, is my Well, no, the solution for the 400,000 is, is, is Medicaid. Is, but well, <laughs> Medicaid is one of Medicaid is one of the options. We in Virginia but, but we have the Indigenous Health you Care Trust it. Fund which but, also but, but that the, covers the, that covers less than uh, I mean if if you only make 80% of the federal poverty line, then you're eligible for Medicaid in, in Virginia. You're not eligible for Medicaid otherwise. 80% of the federal poverty line is very very low. Okay, but the we expansion, did and the I, expansion used to be, that the, I used to be vice chairman government. of the state Medicaid board. We did studies of who the uninsured were. And yes, this was a while ago because I uh, obviously the Democratic governors did not reappoint me. But the. Uh, <laughs> they should have. <laughs> they should yes. have. I agree. I, I would agree. have kept everybody but, awake at the so, meeting. So. But <laughs> we did studies on who was uninsured. And we found, not all, we found that a significant percentage of the uninsured were younger folks who were not going to buy no matter what and folks who preferred fee for okay, service. You, so the please, window was not as. Large, large, was sure. not as large remind as you me think. what year that was? I guess it was eight years ago. Um, oh. Actually, no, because these, no, because the term ended halfway through uh, Warner's term. Oh, I know through yeah through Warner. So, so, so it was so two thousand four. Yeah, okay, so so eight, nine. quite a bit before the economic downturn. Is that what you're saying? Well, we've had economic downturns before. Well, the numbers but, but stay. This, the numbers, the percentages stay about the same. This particular economic downturn. 
um, got a lot of people off of insurance, got a lot of people who had been in, well, who had been full-time employed. I keep hearing employed from the now. Obama administration that we've made such great progress, so thus the economy should be I, better I, now, I, right? Well, so I, there should be fewer people who are of well, need of the we service. Know, we know the bottom people line people is, go to, Dave, you're 400,000. That's the yeah. Virginia estimate, 400,000 people that are need insurance that don't have it. That would be that's, in that, that's no, not in that Medicaid window. That's not the correct, right. that's not that's the, the, the correct oh, okay. number. You're saying, you're saying that, uh, and, and there, refresh my memory, isn't it 400% of, uh, is, it, is it 300 or 400% 400 of, of the poverty, poverty line. line? So mm -hmm. what you're saying is the federally accepted poverty line, three or four times that. So at that point, uh, you know, in Northern Virginia, that is a, that is, a, in, in certain areas, that is a very difficult wage. It's in other areas of the state, that's not necessarily the same situation. Yeah, but let's take it to if the If you're making the 40, $50,000 dollars a year I'm trying in, to get you guys up to the public policy debate that's going on in Richmond, and that is to expand Medicaid so that you're capturing all those people and the benefit, the longer term benefit of that, and the ability to get federal matching funds for that. Um, what is, what is, John, let's go to you, you haven't spoken in a while. Well, I, I, thought, I thought my colleague here summarized it perfectly. Mm -hmm. I mean, using the, the people from the south of the state. Uh, what kind of a system is it that says you go to an emergency room when it's really too late, sometimes to do anything, except right. to make you comforted by medication and to risk getting not a complete treatment because you're not paying the hospital? Yeah. Uh, and yes, we, we bear that burden, whatever that is. That's not any way to treat fellow citizens and gal citizens. And <laughs> when we've already paid the money and everybody else is sharing in it, uh, why aren't we taking those funds and doing what we can to alleviate whatever medical problems we have now until we can't? Yeah. And if we and, and if the program changes and the politics change, okay, then that's a problem. But right now, we have the opportunity to take care of people who need medical care, and we have people, particularly in the House, for ideological reasons that are not shared elsewhere in the country among Republican legislatures. Uh, Half that the states haven't accepted. Uh, there mean, are Republican legislatures, including uh, uh, Brewer, for instance, who uh, supported Medicaid. And we should be supporting it right here in Virginia. And, and, it's, like and it, it's an outrage. It, it is a shameful it? outrage. We already paid for it. The money is in the bank. When the, when the federal man, really? Yes. Really? Yes. We're, 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 yes. we're trillions of yes. dollars in debt, and there's money in the bank. Okay. Let me they, put it. Let me put it a different way to you. We, so we, we have don't have to pay we are, for it. We are massively we, the Commonwealth of Virginia don't have to pay for it. We, well, we actually, can, we're, we're, we're also, we're and we had a war over we're, this, we're, we're also we're, citizens of the United States. So yes, we do have to pay well, for it because we are responsible for that. The taxpayers of the Commonwealth of Virginia and our federal system have paid for it. We are already and we'll continue to pay for it, and, and, we, will and we will not get the benefit, and we will not get the benefit of return But you understand funds. the folks and that hold our loans are paying well, for Try this on your size. The analogy is in Northern Virginia, we send tax dollars to Richmond and don't get back and, as much and we're as we also pay. Paying for this is the same parks, thing to the federal government. And we're also paying for so all I, sorts of other things that maybe you don't so agree with, line, but, we're gonna but, save but a lot of we don't get to choose what we get to pay for. Well, we actually, get we, to choose. Hey, here's the we, fun we, thing. We, you guys yeah. are really all excited we, today, we and get it's to great, choose because we have legislators I'm gonna who are making caffeine. the decisions. Let Dave, I'm going to let Dave talk to sort of the, the fiscal part of it, but also the politics in Richmond seem to be, and maybe I got this wrong, but I'm hearing that the governor's kind of saying, I'm going to hold money for your transportation initiatives until you agree to the budget with Medicaid in it. That would be well, extortion. It's, it's actually, that it's that actually the other way around. <laughs> it's the, the, I, I the guess it's the, 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 the House of Delegates is saying yeah. we don't want to pay for this. We're not going to. We're not going to say yes to that budget. Um, unless you take that out, but it's linked it's not, to the transportation yeah, debate. But, but and still, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a fiscal decision. It's a, it's, it's a political decision because fiscally, we're going to make the money back because people aren't going to be going to the emergency room. But we're but not going to be taking all that. They do. We're not, they still do anyway. Yeah. I mean, they're but showing if we're on Medicaid Chamber, that we're going to have more preventive health care, which is going to reduce the amount. The, the CBO did a whole study on this yeah, and all that. So it's, it's a, it's a political thing. But, the, but currently, not, the people who are on. Obamacare are still going to uh, emergency rooms at, at 
a similar rate to they were before. The fact that they have insurance just yeah. means what the insurance you, what, you, is covered. They're still showing up. You expect? Because well, in many in many cases that's the place they know to go. You start. Do you expect? Do you expect a step? A step All of a sudden. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. January one. All of a sudden, fifteen million people in this country follow the rules. We need to wrap up this exciting half of the show. Okay. Exciting is a good way to put it. You know. Of course, people are going to go to the emergency room. The question is why and what the result is, and are we using it more efficiently, and are we not paying for an emergency visit that can be covered by Medicaid or medical insurance? All right, Jim, how's it going to play out? How's it going to play out before the end of the special session that's going to be coming up soon? I suspect that the 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 House will refuse to accept an unfunded mandate until they understand. It's only the Speaker. You know, there's a lot there's a lot of Republican members of the House that would vote for Medicaid, except that the Speaker is threatening them. And he's the single person that's holding up the entire thing. Well, I yeah. suspect well, there are a well, lot and, that would be the other way around. And <laughs> tag recent. <laughs> <laughs> we well, we well, got well, a few seconds left. Well, well, we're going to end up with Lynn summarizing. If the speaker Here's switched, tag would switch so fast, make your head swim. <laughs> that's probably well, I, true. I, but, but, the, but the thing is that... And he would probably have a primary opponent. The thing is that this is not an unfunded mandate. What this is is a... Not in that district. This is not an unfunded mandate. This is money that is being offered to us. If we reach out and take it, we can then say... No, thank you. No more in two years if it if it gets cut. Time, we actually time, have that time. in writing. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. We'll we'll be back in a few minutes with the more exciting the road to debate. <laughs> of September 11th, there have been hundreds of violent attacks against innocent Americans. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. Remember, please stop the hate. We're stronger when we are united. Remember. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty. And justice. For all. In America, there's either room for everyone, or it's not America. Don't pick the wrong fight. Let's keep America land of the free. Stop the hate. You'd never know it on the battlefield. But nearly half of today's military are National Guard and reservists. However, they can't answer our nation's call without their employer's support. If you're an employer, visit ESGR.org and find out how to do your part. After all, their response depends on yours. This is Mommy's bed. Me and Jenny were jumping on it. Mommy's gun fell on the floor. I was a cowboy. Bang, 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 bang. I said, Jenny, wake up, wake up. It's just pretend. But she wouldn't wake up. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of dealing with you. I'm sick of I work six days a week. Who do you think you Stand are? Up straight. Don't you ever talk back to me again. You just shut up. What a child learns about violence, a child learns for life. Teach carefully. We can show you how. Act against violence. Call 877-ACT-WISE for a free brochure. Sweetheart, smoke outside now. You promise. Okay, hon. Sweetheart, smoke outside now. You promise. What kind of man are you? I'm a father. Look here, my father was a father, and he smoked his brains out in the house. Watch as he blows those smoke rings on my little red face. You probably have asthma. Asthma? Asthma. asthma. I'm telling you, nothing's going to happen to your kids. I swear. Don't swear when you're lying. You know very well that thousands of kids get bronchitis, ear infections, and even pneumonia from their parents' cigarette smoke. And didn't you promise your little angels you'd smoke outside? Hey, Daddy. Hi. Those little devils are just so sweet. <laughs> Do the right thing. Please, smoke on Until you can stop, go out for your kids. Take the pledge. Call 1-800-513-1157. As time flows on, there are places we return to again and again. Precious places. Timeless places. 
Places that, with your help, can endure forever. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places around the world. Welcome back to The Road To. This is the first episode in our 16th season, and we're now in the second half of the game here. So we've had a lively discussion on healthcare all over the map, and we're gonna go kind of take a dive into some local politics. We've got uh, Vice Mayor uh, Dave Butler here to talk about what's going on in Leesburg, and then we're gonna talk about the county writ large. We're kind of loud and focused today. And Dave, why don't you tell us what the state of play is within the town council and what some of the sort of larger um, priority debates are? Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting in the town of Leesburg. Um, I'm disappointed with the direction that the council's going uh, with taxes. Uh, we vote on Tuesday, and we're liable to uh, vote for the equalized tax rate which to Republicans seems to be a very reasonable thing. Uh, but in fact, it represents a 1.6% tax cut, uh, really, because um, the, it's not inflation adjusted. And in what, what kind of tax rate did you call it? Equalized. 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 Which is the, yeah. which, which you legally have to do unless you have a hearing to How change it. How is that it. different? Well, that? the equalized tax rate means that it's been adjusted for whatever happens with the um, house prices. And so the, uh, okay, this, this more, more or less, on average, the same person will be paying the same amount in taxes um, one year versus the next. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Now, it varies, you know, depending on your house, uh, you know. The so it's not really tied to the assessed rate. It, it's tied it to takes, housing it affects, prices. You know, yeah, it's okay. balanced uh, with, uh, with that. So, okay, so um, people aren't having more out of pocket. Right. Okay. But the, the, the problem in Leesburg is that uh, since 2007, our actual uh, taxes, the average tax bill has gone down 26%. Um, since then, and when inflation adjusted, it's gone down a whopping 37 percent. And you simply, uh, seven years out of eight, we've lowered taxes. Um, and last year was the only year out of those eight where we actually managed to have an inflation adjusted equalized rate. Uh, and the problem is you can't continue to do that with any local government. That's probably more than any government in the country, uh, you know, perhaps. And because what happens if you do that too much and you continue to do that, our long-term uh, budget, we lay out a budget through like uh, 2020, and it's risky. It makes a lot of assumptions. Mm -hmm. It assumes that a lot of housing developments that have been approved um, will be built and increase the tax base. Mm -hmm. uh, it also uh, assumes that we're not going to have another recession, which we've had this expansion, uh, tepid as it has been, has been um, longer than average. Mm -hmm. uh, and if any one of those things happen, uh, it can be a real problem. And even in the budget that, that we're going to pass, the expectation is in 2020, we're going to be about $2 million in the hole. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a concern. And, and there's a lot of things that we would like to do to increase the quality of life in Leesburg, but we just can't do it because there's too many people that on the council that well, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So what I, the, What are the gaps that you think that we're, are going to be like an increasing problem if we don't kind of go the other way on the tax rate? Well, there's, there's nonprofits that we could support. There's um, trails, uh, bike trails that we would like to build. There's some, um, a couple of uh, like uh, mini um, roundabouts that traffic circles that uh, we'd like to uh, put in. Is that a safety issue uh, or is it a aesthetic? Yeah, both, both safety and traffic flow. They work okay. better than four-way stops. They, in a lot of cases, they work better than traffic lights. Um, they're not that expensive, but you know it's the mantra we you, can't afford it. You, Sometimes, you I mean, do, people they're, they're, some, they're, they're, the roundabouts are somewhat there. controversial because a lot of people well, have problems. They're, they tend to have a lot of accidents in them because people aren't quite sure how they work. Well, but on, on average, there's fewer accidents than <laughs> not all people, but than, some people. This than, is than like the Darwin thing. test. You but know, what, you know, what, can you figure out a roundabout? No, you shouldn't be in a car. Well, people get confused with who the right of way, and they stop in the middle of them, and they. Sorry, I can't be so generous. <laughs> oh, those lights! Like, oh my Democrat. God, the light is green. What does that mean? Oh, well, no, oh it's red. Around. Now I don't have to do anything. I'm thinking, yeah. John, well, let's put this in the context <laughs> okay. of the. Okay. Okay. Talking about it's a concern. Uh, maybe there is an idea, city. but it's not. Let's talk about the county well, budget. I, I think uh, the county is a similar concern. We have. Um, I don't want to say Neanderthals or backward-looking people, sure but you do. Uh, I think I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I'm, I'm your marionette. So, what we have is. Uh, we have a county that said, come, we will give you the three things that are in almost all local elections, transportation, 
education, safety. That's it. That's, that's what you do as a candidate. How are you going to do those things? Come, we have the best schools in the world. It's Northern Virginia. It's the Bitten Bite Beltway up and through uh, Eastern Loudoun and Fairfax, right? Then you get here and you say, well, we're going to close our local schools, four of them, save $2 million, though we can spend money on the Redskins. And uh, $2 million. We, you know, we, we're not sure about magnet schools because heaven help us if we had geniuses coming out of our schools and we don't want to spend any money to Fairfax to do that because we we're us. What kind of a policy is that? Now, okay, the people who suffer are the ones who are there now. And what does it mean for the people who think to come there and say, well, you know, Fairfax has a serious education policy. Maryland has a serious education policy. Why should I go to Loudoun County? Are you speaking up for charter schools? No, I'm not. I'm just speaking Magnus against schools. charter schools. I'm speaking for public schools because charter schools are just our updated way of segregating kids. And it is our updated way, and of all places, the South, to choose who gets into what schools and by what manner. And then taxpayers end up underwriting a profit system in which they subcontract all the profitable elements out, and they cut the public out of the decisions of the charter schools. I'm against all charter schools. So, so you, I, you know I, better I, I than am, I am poor families who want to send their kids schools, to However, schools. I think magnet schools, which are public schools, that offer school choice are a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Loudoun County, we haven't got uh, to that point yet. And it really disappoints me that um, one of the magnet schools that they were thinking about has been cut out of the budget. Uh, and that um, full day kindergarten, which is so important, is cut out of the budget too. I mean, that may I, explain my problems. I never went to I, kindergarten. I, I, <laughs> it's, so I would have been four, socialized four, early, four, and he um, and I would be in agreement. You were socialized enough. Um, uh, three. Some small number. It's, three. it's three districts in the entire state don't have all day kindergarten universally throughout their county, and. And we're one. We're one yeah. of them. And we and only have what's the, the highest average yeah. um, family well, income in the and, country? And, and, it's, it's, and we can't it, afford full-day kindergarten? It's the place where makes no it's sense. horrible. If it's you just spend horrible. a dollar on, on full-day kindergarten, you save four in high school. And it's just... Uh, I'm not, I, 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 I kind of doubt Jim that God. study. But I doubt that study. But considering <laughs> the problems that the schools are currently having with declining test scores and things like that, maybe we kind of need to focus on getting not, the, our main Loudon stuff County's right not having, before we expand Loudoun it. County's not having problems with declining test scores. There's all, all across the Virginia budget, scores of decline. Is there a threat to uh, not improving the quality of education? Well, I, I mean, as a country... We're should, now what seventeenth in the but world. We in math and what we have I, exactly. Before Here's we our expand model. Expand something that's got problems. Our so you fix it first before you try no, to no, expand. No, no, I'm not talking about expansion. I'm talking well, about, you're talking about all our, American, about our American model is huge as the best. So we're lim we eliminate everything from small farmers and small businesses to small schools. To charter We have schools. these factories, and we always build them on single level. You know, I don't know why we can't build them higher. Well, the, but we have these huge factories. On, on two levels. We have two, two levels. Terrific. Yeah. We have too many people in a classroom, which absolutely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. We underpay our teachers, and we wonder why they go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We don't give them raises, and we wonder why they go elsewhere. We don't give them security. If you want to teach in the system, and I once offered to teach Latin class, they wanted me to be loyal to the system, but they want to treat me as an independent contractor. To me, that doesn't matter as a matter of income. But they ask for my loyalty, but they don't give any to me. Mm -hmm. And that's what a teacher sees. So they say, what is this? I have, I have no security here. Actually, you do, I'll agree with you on one, at least one point. Oh, that would be uh, they make it, <laughs> the, the schools make it very, very difficult uh, to, to uh, bring in talent from who that has, haven't gone through education uh, classes in college. Mm -hmm. So you, a talented lawyer who wants to come in and teach, I'm not sure what you want to teach, but- It was well, Latin. Latin, yeah. okay, uh, clearly, you know, you know Latin, well, you would be a good Latin teacher, but they don't want you because you didn't no, go through that, that, the education bureaucracy that, well, that, that's first. not at all what he said. Well, no, no, I, I also agree with that because they, they do require education classes as yeah. most teachers a will degree, tell you. A full, uh, whole degree, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And when, when they wanted me to pedagogy. teach a class at NYU, after years of experience in trying cases and so forth, uh, they said that they couldn't have me because they didn't have a master's in law, which is even more absurd in the field <laughs> of law unless you're going to do tax law, and then it makes a lot more sense. Uh, so I couldn't teach based on real experience and knowing something to students in a law school. So we th have this is a problem. We solved everything. We did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, We're done minute, now. But that was <laughs> that. That's it. We're but, leaving the show. Was, <laughs> this will never have a moment like this again. <laughs> but that was at NYU, which is a private college, right? 
Uh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> but what they no matter, are. But I, no matter I mean, where it's the he principle goes, of the education. Still the same. It is the principle Actually, of education. My, my father is a, a dean of online learning at uh, NYU Polytechnic. Okay, oh, well, I may so reapply he, he now. Couldn't, he couldn't teach <laughs> Latin. Uh, he couldn't teach Latin in Latin schools and unless he had gone through, gotten an additional that's, degree that's not what in he teaching. Said. Well, I, I could say that, well, though. That I, would be uh, true. Can we go I, to I, the, I know that there are a lot of people... Can we go to... Go ahead, sorry. Uh, sorry. I, I know that there are a lot of people who um, get jobs at, in Loudoun County Public School without having a, a master's in education by b being um, substitutes first um, and getting their teacher training that way. Well, we How have long? a new superintendent, and I don't know what yeah. that How means. How long do you need to be a substitute? So, uh, you I guys, I, I, I kind of want to like pull this back to a more strategic <laughs> discussion because we're down Dollars in the weeds cents. of what are our yeah. priorities at the you know city level, the county level, the uh, state level. Let's, let's look at... Um, the Ryan budget, which just came out this week, that really gets again to, as a country, which you know works its way down to the city level. Can, what what do we find to be I, important? Can I put my NARAL hat on just for a second here? There there are studies all over the world that um, show that in that in order to reduce the number of abortions, uh, the abortion rate. Um, there are things that really work to to do that. One is to uh, give comprehensive sex education. One is to um, provide uh, low cost quality birth control. Uh, one is to um, make sure that um, prenatal care and postnatal care are um, not to uh, not outrageously expensive for um, people to buy. Um, uh, parental leave and um, quality daycare. Those are things that are proven to lower abortion rates throughout the world. Okay. The Ryan I, uh, budget cuts, cuts all of those things. What possible study do you have that shows that okay, all so of those do that? So she, that, example. that her example was about priorities. Well, those are, I, I, mean, I mean, maybe some of those help, but I, I, it's hard to imagine that it's hard to imagine that someone decides whether to have an abortion or not based on whether they're going to be. I think she's talking about she didn't getting pregnant get or not. Whether going to be daycare or not. Well, 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 well maybe there are absolutely. some people who think absolutely. that. But, but you think everybody it, who decides you, whether they're having an abortion, it, it, golly, it, it, maybe maybe if I don't have proper daycare, I need to have an abortion. If you look at you there are some I'm talking about unwanted getting pregnant when you're not ready to. I think it's. But is the is the teenager? Who or whomever is a person who who gets pregnant was 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 daycare first no, in their mind. Well, well, the people of, in their twenties, which, no. which is a much higher percentage of abortions than you might yeah. realize. Most, but, when, but again, most does abortions daycare are actually, make the break most, the tie? Yes, well, actually, if you can't take most care abortions, of your kid, the child is most abortions uh, are had by women who already have a child, and not just daycare. Mm -hmm. and, well, and the, the daycare rates are a little and, expensive time for an abortion. I mean, well, really, no, it's it. It's I can't afford to yeah. have this child at this time. I can't afford to send them to daycare. I can't afford to work without sending them to daycare. It's not going to work. And if you have right. low cost mm -hmm. quality daycare available, people actually do when they uh, are faced with an unintended pregnancy say, well, you know, I think I will have this baby because I can do it. I can, I can afford it. When you can't afford it, if you uh, I mean, take a look at that um, homeless woman uh, who had four kids and had no place to put them while she tried to get a job, and so she left them in the car, and she got arrested. Now, I, I so think I, no. So didn't change her decision. Is well, what you're saying. I mean, she, I'm sorry, well, but that's she, it, it, she, it didn't. It, she's had the babies anyway, right? Well, so she. Uh, well, friend, and I'm not advocating she had an abortion. Her friend, her friend I'm that, not advocating she had friend the, that the saw her get arrested is maybe likely to make a difference. But, but that's a whole different yeah. thing. Well, no, let's go back to priorities. This is, this and let's about I think that was. I didn't know where you were going with that. But my point is that that that. The, that Jim Ryan has been saying uh, that he, John, sorry, Ryan, not Jim Ryan, John Ryan is saying that. Uh, Paul Ryan. Paul, Paul Ryan. Ryan. Jim Ryan. There's a lot a of Ryan. <laughs> his, his presidential. Ryan. Jim Ryan, Ryan was a miler. Paul, his that, vice presidential that, yes. can, campaign didn't help him very Paul, much. Paul name Ryan, recognition. <laughs> Paul Ryan says that he is pro-life and that he uh, is against abortion in all cases. His budget is a completely anti um, that stance. It's, it's, the, 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 it's, it's really actually, it's actually, I mean, you it's not actually, like it's budget, it's but that's really a reach. She's talking she about societal infrastructure that if, allows people to yeah. make the choice. But Jim, go if, ahead. If he wants people to make to the keep choice their to, baby. Keep the, to, to keep their babies, his budget absolutely goes down the number saying, 
I don't want you to keep your baby. Well, but you want a budget that has Catholic churches paying for abortions, uh, oh, paying for abortions in no, Obamacare. That's I, not at all. I, that's got nothing to do with it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. But let's, neither, let's, I mean, let's, I, I, let's I didn't talk say that. Let's, 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 let's talk I about the budget overarching concerns. Okay, do you, do you want to let, John, let religious let organizations talk. out of Obamacare? I, you know let's what I want? John talk, guys. I want religious organizations to completely back low-cost daycare, um, uh, comprehensive sex education. Um, so you want the Catholic Church to pay for a comprehensive sex education? I got sex not, education. May not no, agree with their. No. Let, let's okay. go. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about want, the, the budget. A little religious freedom is not let's a bad the weeds. thing. The, the budget if you, if you don't want is simplified in this fashion. Yeah, taking me. this is just one aspect of it. Um, the guns and butter theory of Johnson was we could fight war and we could also take care of people at home. Obviously that was wrong. Riot's no, notion is we're going to have police and we're going to have armed services and we're going to continue the kind of fear network we have by which we protect ourselves against terrorism. We're going to cut our social agenda. And we're going to take care. We're going to continue to subsidize everybody on Wall Street, we're going to take care of those people with protections and all sorts of things and tax provisions. But the people on Main Street, eh, you know, sink or swim. That's his budget. That's what his budget was before. That's what it is now. That is the Republican agenda in the House, not in the Senate. It's a little more nuanced in the Senate. Luckily, there is a Senate right now that would stop that budget. So they can pass it just like they 40 times voted against Obamacare, as they prefer to call it, instead of the Affordable Care Act. But that budget's going nowhere. So we are trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. What well, big there? deal. From it's a big what? country. From, I mean, I'm sorry, from, from but it's wait, so wait, what? Wait, wait. Big deal? You have a credit card. Yeah. Right, I don't you have You have debt. I don't have trillions. You have trillion. a mortgage. I don't you have, have trillions debt. of dollars on my credit no, card. No, but proportionally, how much of your, of your well, entire, on. quote, estate is composed of credit? If the, a large if part the, of it. Well, Most people's home, it's 80%. Right. Some are under the water in America. But I don't think... Uh, that's yes. debt. I'm sorry, but, that's debt. Right. Mortgage and, is and, debt. And Credit think, cards we, are I, debt. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't we all agree that debt is a bad thing? No, we no, don't. No, we don't. No. We debt consider leverage. it leverage. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. We, <laughs> we rehearsed that for an hour before we okay. came but, out here. But that brings, but that so brings up the, we went to the same school. Let me rephrase it. Let me rephrase it. What, what, do you think, what do you think about debt you actually intend on paying back? Maybe well, that's a different this, question. Well, that's, that's, now you're talking about oh, Republican campaign right. finance. Republicans I loan you the money and you don't have to pay it back. Are you saying Democrats are not paying it back? And what it sounds like from your comment is you don't expect to ever pay the debt back. And I'm wondering how that works. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. We balanced the budget. Do you remember right. that? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. So you remember when we balanced the budget and had a I, 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 I do remember the debt back. Democrats balanced the budget. I'm going to have to whistle, guys. I, 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 I remember under Speaker Gingrich. Okay. I remember under Republican Speaker Gingrich. Yes, we did have a balanced budget for a bit. But the issue here, though, I think Jim's point about debt is a very legitimate point. The, what we bring in really? and what we pay for, it goes to back to the Leesburg Town Council. Are we bringing in enough for things that we say are important? Are we spending too much? And it has to be a long-term, you know, the long-term picture much? has to be uh, <laughs> the, the decider there because in 10 years, 20 years, we need to be taking care of those things we say as a society are important. So let's go back to Roundabout. Uh, well, let's I, use a different example well, than than Okay. Uh, back back when back um, when we went into Iraq, we put that on the nation's credit card. We didn't raise taxes to cover it. Um, and at that time, if we had said we're going to have uh, uh, we're going to raise taxes to cover this war because it's the patriotic thing to do, and oh by the way, why doesn't everybody plant a victory garden at the same time? You know, our our whole nation's emotions about 9/11 would have carried us through that. But instead, we put it on a credit card, and that. So What's you wanted to use 9-11 to raise taxes? No, no I wanted to. Is, I, we wanted did, to we, we, I wanted no. to kept ourselves blind to the fact taxes. that we couldn't afford it. Never an opportunity I, to I raise taxes. I wanted to raise taxes to cover the war in Iraq. Anyway? 
Well, I, I want to raise taxes to cover wars. If you're going to have a war, no doubt you need to pay for it. At least the first we have enough years, money to, so. to We have enough money to bomb other countries, but we don't have enough money to feed our own children? That's no, no, stupid. No. Well, we feed our yeah. own children enough that we have an obesity problem, as uh, Michelle Obama uh, has eloquently pointed out. No. So I'm curious, are we starving that'll, that'll or are we overweight? That would be a whole other show. How does that work? Here's the problem with the Ryan budget is that the, the, the Republican focus on tax cuts for the rich and paying for the military um, and cutting out all the programs that assist um, you know, middle and lower income classes, that those are exactly the wrong things to do to help the economy of the country. So how do you want to balance the wrong the thing because all those I don't care the about balancing the budget, the, the, perhaps. The, that's sort of just, that's a mildly cutting, disturbing cutting, coming from no, the elected official. No, not at all. Cutting taxes. He's saying, he's never saying ever given, balance the budget? He's saying given where we are, which goes back to Liz's yeah. point, is we didn't pay for things do that we, they, Do we said ever balance cutting, the budget? Cutting, what happens when somebody forecloses? Well, why why does the budget have to be balanced on the poorest people and not on the richest because people? Because the, bal- the budget has never been balanced by cutting spending. It has always been balanced balanced by growth. And the Ryan budget is the most anti-growth budget that I've seen in many, many years coming out of any party in the federal government. We need a pro-growth budget. So what is your, uh, so a, the pro-growth a, a, budget is what? A pro Spend growth, money we don't have until no, finally we no, go bankrupt? A pro, a pro growth More bankrupt bu- than we are? A pro-growth budget is one that um, taxes uh, investment at this um, investment You income. understand taxes, mm-hmm. taxes destroy growth. No, 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 that's economics 101. No, it's not economics 101. That's economics 101. A strong middle class. What college did you guys go to? There is no evidence. Our economy grew fastest in the 1950s when we had some of the highest taxes ever on the richest. There is there is absolutely no evidence the Republican that Eisenhower raising taxes tax program. hurts growth. Zero. If you go and look at statistically Winning the United World War II helped a bunch too. But if you yeah. if you go and look at statistically, okay, since World War II and compare where we've had higher taxes and uh, versus growth, okay, tax cuts um, uh, tax cuts on the rich hurt growth because they just yes. save it and they put it into their bank right. accounts in Switzerland they, they, rather than wow. spending the money yes. like oh. the poorer people do. Uh, no, when when they, poorer they, people because have, because have uh, more tax cuts and more money in their pocket, they actually go out and no buy more. That's why you want to cut taxes on the middle class. Yes, I agree. We should cut taxes on the middle class because that money will go directly back into the economy. Well, so now we, do we so, all agree so, uh, now on yeah, tax cuts Jim. for the middle if you class? Want, <laughs> if you want to raise taxes on the rich, trying to pick up a win here. If you want to raise taxes on the rich and cut taxes on the middle class, so that it's uh, revenue neutral, I'm with you. Well, yes. here's the problem with raising taxes on the rich. Um, they don't want they us don't, to do that. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> and they will pay all the Congress. What's, what's, and amazing, story what's, what's amazing, story is very amazing simple. is that when you all talk about the rich, eventually, like Willie Sutton and Banks, you got to go where the money is. And the money is there are more people, even though the middle class makes mu- less per person, there are more people in the middle class. So you can go around and confiscate Bill Gates' entire, all of his money. You can confiscate the, the, the super rich. Uh, you can confiscate uh, all of their no, money and saying, you still don't have enough money which is why you end up turning to the middle class no, and that's where you no, the, that's where no, the money no, is no 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 nobody is, nobody is, nobody is, nobody is confiscating anybody's money but when you have more yeah, money than you could spend a little confiscation april 15th seems well, like a little confiscation no <laughs> when you have more money than you could spend in your lifetime or your kids lifetime or their kids lifetime it's the government needs to take it away yeah. no is that what we're saying here no it's what? Why do those people need to have more and more and more and more and more tax cuts when the people who are at the bottom and the middle uh, could use those uh, tax cuts or subsidies themselves? John, what about well, capital well, gains? And well, what, what, the, the way I look at it is from 1970 forward, complicated somewhat by technology and the global economy all of a sudden, we had a lot of American companies going offshore and taking advantages of cheap labor and other things, which compromised the middle class, which could continue to live something like the lifestyle it had by using their house as their bank. In 2008, that went away. Um, The real problem has been from 1970 forward, instead of us all being in this together, we the people, the wealthiest have taken larger and larger portions of their share, and they shifted into uh, investments, which are taxed very differently, 
and they're not making jobs because they make much more money on returns and not here and offshore. And the they've written all sorts, let me finish, go. let me finish. And they've written all sorts of things into the code that take care of them. At the same time, they have mechanized and eliminated jobs and paid those who have jobs less as a matter of real income from 1970 going forward. Yeah. So that's why you have this enormous gap, which is considered historically dangerous between the, the non-job creators, who are capital creators and offshore mostly, versus the workers who are being squeezed in every way possible. And so uh, the nation seems to have been resilient in the past to these disparities, but it's accelerated so much that I think that we have a nation at a tipping point. We don't know when it's gonna happen in which the greed at the top is going to compromise our entire system mm -hmm. because the middle class has slipped into the lower class. So we have, instead of a middle class, we really have what's been termed an anxious class. Mm -hmm. And then we have a super rich class. And the truth is they're not paying their share. And if you look at the studies, when they were doing 95% tax in Eisenhower, and even as it decreased over the years, mm -hmm. um, they didn't, that didn't seem to be a problem. But greed has taken over, and they no longer want to participate in the system that was created in 1787, in part to, to protect a business class with contracts and you know, uh, stability against foreign powers and everything else. So our system is really badly broke, and we're not doing anything about it because the wealthy class is controlling the system, and the recent Supreme Court decision com combined with earlier ones has given even more power to the money class to control exactly how we're represented, which means how they're represented, with a hidden agenda that compromises us on Main Street in favor of Wall Street and offshore business. That's my Well, I have a book to recommend on that, Beyond Outrage by Robert Reich, but I'll let uh, you have a book some, to recommend some, Sometimes too? I'm beyond outrage too, but yeah. here's no. the thing. You've talked, We've you've got talked a minute about, left, so okay, everyone's real got quick. 10 you, you just talked about, you talked about, uh, okay, well, anyway, the, the, the bottom line is they're investing you just said they're investing well that's investing in businesses which is investing in jobs if we were to confiscate all no, no, of the one percent no no money, it's not jobs no no it's not businesses it's gimmicky they're invest, they're it's gimmick, gimmicky second and third generation right. stuff that cost 2008 it's, we're headed hey guys, toward we're another bubble to it's, it's if we got rid of all the rich people I think, I think if we, we got rid of all the rich people we still have Jim? the deficit Jim? then what Jim we need a sequel to this conversation because we're just getting like we're even getting better here so Liz would you like to say goodbye for two seconds I really am so happy to have been here. This is so much fun. I, <laughs> okay. I, I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> and Dave, thank you for coming. No, and I agree, and thank you very much for inviting me. Okay, and, uh, great points. Yeah. Marvelous hostess. Thank oh, you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs> 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 we'll see you next time on The Road 2.